This video covers over 20 of the worst foods and ingredients for high blood pressure and heart disease. Some of them even have the American Heart Association's heart check mark right on the label. If you have a blood pressure of 130 over 85 or higher, or if you're taking a blood pressure med like lisinopril or metoprolol, this episode is for you. If you don't start reducing these foods, your blood pressure will continue to go up. Then you'll need more meds and higher doses. Those medications come with side effects like stomach problems, feeling lightheaded, and headaches. To lower your risk for these side effects and heart disease, reduce these foods in your diet. And as a heads up, once you start to improve your diet, your blood pressure can lower fast. Your medications may overshoot and cause symptoms of low blood pressure. These include anxiety, lightheadedness, and fatigue. One of our Zibli members got off her blood pressure medication a few months after changing her diet. So we recommend you get an at-home blood pressure machine and be in communication with your physician. You can ask for guidelines on when to hold your blood pressure pills. For example, if your pulse rate is under 60 or your top blood pressure number is less than 90. Those are common numbers, but ask your doctor for specific precautions for you. Before we get into the foods, please know a food is only off limits if you say it is. We don't want you to feel guilty for eating these foods, just informed. I don't restrict anything from my diet. I just choose healthy foods 90 to 95% of the time. And this video doesn't focus a lot on low sodium foods because you've probably already heard that and are trying that. The first food to avoid for high blood pressure are sugar sweetened beverages. These include soda, pop, juice, Gatorade, and sweet tea. We call these foods naked carbs because they are all sugar. There's no fiber, protein, or fat to slow the digestion. So you'll get a big blood sugar spike, then a big insulin spike, and a big aldosterone spike. And aldosterone will increase salt retention, which will increase water retention. This raises blood volume, which, which raises blood pressure. The second food will surprise you. It has the American Heart Association stamp of approval. Companies actually pay the American Heart Association for the right to display the heart check mark on its label. It's actually part of a class action lawsuit about deceptive advertising. This annual fee ranges between $3,000 to $6,000 per food product. Think about that before you buy Cheerios. These are mostly refined carbohydrates, especially the versions that have more added sugar like the multigrain and honey nut. One serving of multigrain Cheerios has eight grams of added sugar, which is the third ingredient on the list. The next food to avoid is French fries. They are high in trans fat, which is very inflammatory. Now you may have thought that trans fats were banned, so no longer a problem, but that's not entirely true. Food manufacturers just have to stay under 0.5 grams per serving size. The amount of trans fats in the oils used to fry the processed and fast food actually increases each time the food is fried. Plus they're also high in salt. You do need some salt, but not as much as what's typically found in a high processed food diet. When I think about putting french fries in my body, I'm reminded of the time that I put the wrong gas in my car. It just didn't run well. I knew it didn't have the right fuel and I could have ruined the engine. That's what trans fats do to your body's engine. It just takes a longer time. And you may be so used to feeling like crap that you don't even remember what it feels like to feel good. But once you get the right fuel in your body, you'll be sleeping better, have more energy, and just feel better. The next food item is chips. Have you ever noticed how puffy and bloated you get after eating a bunch of chips? The salt and carbs cause fluid retention. If you're gonna have chips, choose ones that have avocado oil instead of vegetable or canola oil. The next food is candy with color. Sugar is an addictive substance in the same way as nicotine and caffeine. These candies include jelly beans, Skittles, candy corn, and suckers. Now next are other forms of candy, including my favorite, which are the Reese's, Kit Kats, and Snickers. These have some fat and protein, but still aren't much better than the plain sugar, so it's best to reduce these in your diet. The next foods are white pasta, rice, breads, and tortillas. 
These are high in starch, which will spike insulin and contribute to high blood pressure. Choose pasta made from beans or lentils, brown or wild rice, or a rice substitute like cauliflower or broccoli rice. And there are many bread options now that are lower carb and higher protein or fat. The next food is vegetable and seed oils, especially in salad dressings. You might think you're being healthy by eating a salad, but then you pour inflammatory oil on top of it. Although these won't spike blood sugar or insulin, they are inflammatory, and increased inflammation contributes to insulin resistance. Screen your food products for the following oils. Canola, corn, cottonseed, soybean, sunflower, safflower, grapeseed, and rice bran. Sometimes they won't even put which type of oil it is, it just might say vegetable oil. Not surprisingly, these oils are all approved and deemed healthy by the American Heart Association. Choose avocado oil or olive oil-based salad dressings. The next food is microwave popcorn. This goes back to the oil they use that contains trans fats, which are not good for your heart or blood vessel health, and the high amount of sodium. Choose to pop your own popcorn in olive oil or coconut oil and add your own salt. Next on the list is the frozen meals and prepackaged foods. These are simply loaded with sodium, vegetable oils, and often added sugar. For example, this healthy choice sweet and sour chicken has 21 grams of added sugar, which is almost as much as a Snickers bar. It also has almost 24% of your daily value of sodium, plus soybean and canola oil. Many prepackaged diet foods like Weight Watchers, Nutrisystem, or Octavia also contain unhealthy oils, chemicals, and added sugars. The last one is actually sneaky, especially if you're focusing just on macronutrients and trying to have a higher protein, lower carb diet, and that's deli meats. A lot of the pre-packaged deli meats are very high in sodium, so won't be great for blood pressure. And we recommend cooking your own meats or getting minimally processed meats with as few additives as possible. Your best bet against high blood pressure and heart disease is to eat real foods single ingredient foods that are not processed. Have you already started to reduce some of these foods in your diet? And if so, have you seen a change in your blood pressure yet? Let us know in the comments because we always love hearing your stories and insights. And to get a list of 80 plus real foods that help keep blood pressure, insulin, and inflammation low, download our ultimate food guide that we'll link to in the description. And be sure to check out our coaching services if you need personalized support. We provide evidence-based coaching not only for nutrition, but other lifestyle components important to lower blood pressure, including physical activity, stress, and sleep. To learn more about why saturated fat does not need to be demonized for heart disease, watch this video. And then watch this video about five ways that insulin resistance causes high blood pressure and heart disease. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for more on how to lower insulin resistance for better health.